very good evening to you once again from Sutherland, live. Remember, we brought you a program that lasted an hour and a quarter on the Jupiter crash, 94. At a quarter past ten, we went off air somewhat disappointed because the big crash hadn't happened. Q1 fragment, as it's known, just hadn't hit Jupiter. Five minutes later or so, it did, and courtesy of TV1, we came back and told you about it and showed you it. We're back again, and we're going to talk first of all to Dr. Kaz Seguguchi, yes. one of the astronomers resident here at the South African Astronomical Observatory. Thanks for coming across from the 30-inch telescope where you detected this momentous event. Tell us about it. Well, yes, uh, I was a bit worried about it. You know, we didn't get the, this P, uh, Q2 uh, event. Yeah. And, uh, but after about 20 past 10, and suddenly it's, it's become brighter and brighter. Uh, we can actually see this uh, very bright spot appearing yes. at the edge of the ring. Out of all the fragments that landed, how impressed were you by this one? Well, we actually observed about three events already here. And uh, this one wasn't that bright compared to the previous, uh, especially edge we, we observed a couple of nights ago. Yes. However, it was very fast development. Its, it's whole event was lasted only 10 minutes well, or so. Fine. Well, if you weren't with us when we showed it, we're going to take you back to around about 20 minutes past 10 South African time this evening. Take a look at this. Right, let's start some discussion about it. There it is. I wonder if the problem could have been that it, that it impacted Jupiter further round on the dark side than we expected and it took longer to rotate into the field of view uh, and, and therefore we only got a rather short glimpse of it. I think we should make sure people see that they're looking at uh, the right thing. This the object on the very right hand side which you can see with a white spot in the middle. That's the uh, fireball. You can see it brightening. Yes, it's brightening. The white spot is probably getting uh, is the brightest part of it. I think the kijkers must look right boer. Daar zien jullie daar die wit kolkje met daar verder groei met die zwarte rand omheen. Dit is in feite the ontploffing that is to get out of the swell, so we can find a good place to find. This is now Q2, so ontploffing. My understanding of this is that this has been speeded up by a factor two, so we're seeing what happened uh, twice as fast as real time. Yes. Dr. Sekiguchi, why was that uh, late and why did it uh, mar our television program and disappoint <laughs> us terribly? <laughs> well, it, well, actually, uh, actually, impact time uh, predicted was uh, 59, well, uh, I think 9.59 local time or so. And this was happened after 20 minutes. And probably it took uh, some time. Uh, th those impact blast is coming up to the surface of the Jupiter and the blow out. Yeah. So that's, that was the time maybe needed in 20 minutes. It was about the same as uh, the first one we observed, Impact A. Well, thank heavens it happened. Uh, yes. Dr. Whitelock, speed it up by the SABC, double time. It's very impressive, really, isn't it? It's certainly very nice to see, and it'll be very interesting to see when, when the planet rotates a bit in an hour or two's time, just how big the impact uh, um, site is. Uh, that'll give us some idea of, of just how large this was. Now, Dr. Stovey, to you, you obviously you've been recording the light or the infrared energy that is coming out of that impact. What sort of information will you be able to, to interpret in time from that sort of, or from that bright spot and the, the, the meaning thereof? What will come out of it? Over time you'll be able to integrate the total energy to work out the total energy of the explosion. But clear, we're really only observing at one particular wavelength, so you really need to integrate this over all wavelengths. Uh, it seems to me that that has um, been at maximum for some time. Do you, I wonder if Cass thinks this, is it decreasing yet, or is it still at maximum? That looks like it might be beginning to decrease. Do you yes, think I so? think it's decreasing. One thing that will be very interesting is to put these observations together with anything that's been made anywhere else in the world, particularly if people have been making this observations at the same time at different wavelengths and we can integrate this together and, and get the whole picture by, by putting the different measurements together. Thank you all very much indeed for joining us yet again. Thank you for joining us. 
This has been a historic moment, and we think, we're not boasting, but we think we might have brought you the first television coverage of this very important scientific event. More on GMSA tomorrow morning. From all of us, good night.